Okay, so now we're going to do a brief review of measurement scales. I wanted to talk about that again. And so here is the measurement scales. I like the acrostic of no ir, if you speak Spanish. Or noir, if you speak French, right? Do not go or no go or black. Um, so, what does N stand for? N is the nominal scale. This is the lowest possible measurement scale. Uh, it just means that these things differ in name only. Uh, I have a blue shirt or I have a black shirt. Blue, black, red, green, these are differing only in name. All of those are colors of shirts. So that's a nominal scale. Uh, there's no magnitude relationship difference. Not like a blue shirt is somehow more of a shirt than a red shirt. It's not like a yellow shirt is somehow less of a shirt than a green shirt. They're both just colors, but they are different colors. So that's why it's a variable. Ordinal scale, or the O in the noir, or noir, uh, is the ordinal scale, which is a low level magnitude difference in order difference, right? Just like we had the gold, silver, and bronze. You don't know how much more weight the gold medal you know, champion lifter lifted than the silver medalist, but you know that she or he lifted more than that person below. So you know that there's an order, but you don't know by how much the difference. I use the example of my children, how far apart they are. You know that there's the first, the second, and the third born, but you don't know if there's an equal interval between them. <clears throat> I is for interval scale. So interval scale says there's an equal distance between each level so that there's an equal distance between each level. But if it's only interval scale, if it's not the next one, then there's no absolute zero point. We said that an absolute zero point is um, where there's nothing of it present when the, when the measured value is zero. So, we have nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Ratio for the R, as we've discussed before, has both an absolute zero point, so that nothing is there. If this, if, if this variable, if a ratio variable is at zero, none of that variable exists. And it has interval scaling such that 10 is twice as much as five, and 50 is twice as much as 25, right? So it has interval scaling, but also there is an absolute zero point. That's called ratio scale. Well, how about some fun with measurement scales? We'll look at things like nominal scale. So nominal difference, it's only difference in name only. Uh, so things like shoe brands, things like sovereign countries, things like cereal types. You know, did you have Rice Krispies this morning or Cheerios? Uh, I had those frosted mini wheats, you know, the ones that are like small. And they're crunchy, but then they have like little white sugary stuff on top. <clears throat> Those are good. Uh, sovereign countries. My brother lives in Mali. I live in the United States. Those are different countries, but there's no, they're the same amount of a country, right? It's a sovereign country. Mali is not any lesser of a country than the United States. Now there's definitely more poverty there. There's more problems there. They're having a lot of turmoil but it doesn't make it any more or less of a country. Hey, they have better COVID statistics than we do, right? So we're not measuring that. We're just saying, is it a country? Yes, Mali's a country. Is it the same country as the United States? No, it's different. So it's a variable and it's different. Rice Krispies, Cheerios. You might like one better than the other. Like me, you might like Frosted Mini Wheats better, but that doesn't make it any more or less of a cereal brand. You might wear New Balance or Reebok or Adidas. Um, most of us wear Nike, they have the huge market share. But that doesn't make Nike any more of a shoe brand than say Under Armour. Under Armour is also a shoe brand. Um, they are different shoe brands, so they differ in name only. They don't differ based on, um, there's, there's no relationship of magnitude difference between them, but they are different. Okay, so that's uh, for nominal things. For ordinal things, you might think of something like who finished first on The Bachelor, right? Or The Bachelorette. Who finished first and versus who finished second? Who got, who didn't get that last rose? Is the, the Bachelor or The Bachelorette's love for that second person, is it that much more 
than they say the bachelor or the bachelorette's love for the third runner up or the fourth run. You see, we know who went out at which place, but we don't know by how much. So that's ordinal rank. Think of American Idol contestants. They always used to announce this. Oh, you got the most votes and this person didn't. So this person's out and you're the next American Idol. Um, or my wife, she likes to watch, um, what's that show? Pro not, not Project One, right? She did like that one. Uh, America's Next Top Model. You are still in the running for becoming the MX America's Top Model. You don't know by how much that person went on or moved on versus the person who lost or got kicked off the island, right? This is similar to Survivor. But we do know that they're different. Okay. Interval we discussed before is um, something like uh, temperature. And interval means that Obviously, there's the same difference of 20 degrees is half of 40 degrees, but zero degrees doesn't mean that there's no heat there. And so that's what interval scaling, right? That there's an equal number, um, but that it, zero doesn't mean none. So it's not a ratio form. Something like a ratio form, if we were using temperature, would be Kelvin because zero means absolute zero. There is no heat there and there's equal scaling. So it has both interval scaling and an absolute zero point. So those are your examples for scales of measurement. What are some things that have ratio scale Measurement. Well, reaction time. Ready? Catch. Okay. How well can you react? So if I measured your reaction time, that means that you have an absolute zero point. There's no time. Uh, and then time starts. And then there's an equal interval between one second and two seconds and between seven and eight seconds. Um, and that 10 is half of 20 and 20 is half of 40. So that would be uh, a ratio scale. Weight. Weight would be a ratio scale. However, things in psychology don't necessarily have I, uh, ratio scales. We treat them like they do so we can do math on them. I'm gonna give you an example, IQ. Uh, no one gets zero IQ. If I fill out your name, if I'm giving you an IQ test and I fill out your name, you're gonna get a 40. If you don't do anything, if you fall asleep and I score you, I shouldn't because that's bad. But that's not an appropriate use of an IQ test. But nonetheless, if you got every single question wrong on an IQ test, you don't get zero, right? So zero isn't an absolute zero in IQ. Is somebody who has an 80 IQ half as intelligent as somebody who has a 160? It doesn't have that quite interval stuff, but we treat it like it does. And there's some mathematical rationale for why we can do that. And that is, is that these tests have been standardized and we've just created a scoring system within them. So when we compare one person's IQ to another, we know that the standardized scale has been met and that those things have been normalized over tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of test trials. Other things might be, you know, length, right? If something has zero inches, that means that there's no length. Uh, so the ratio has zero, an absolute zero scale and there's internet uh, interval scaling. Something like hmm, shoe size isn't a ratio scale, right? It'd be interval because zero isn't really a thing. And you do know that there's equal interval scaling in, in that, but it's not an absolute zero point. So again, we treat some things that have interval scaling as though they're ratio so we can do statistics on them. But alas, what are you gonna do? We're not perfect. Well, we're going to fudge with math sometimes in here. In fact, that's one of the things that you're going to need to understand is that math is a tool for us. And sometimes you use a hammer um, to hit nails. That's its intended purpose. And sometimes you use a hammer as a paperweight. That's another way to use that tool. So we are going to find many ways to use the hammer of statistics.